Hi traders and welcome back to another PineScript lesson. Today's lesson is going to be a short one as I'm extremely busy this week, but I wanted to put something out because it's been a few weeks since my last video. I'm working on a new series that will show you how to auto trade using TradingView alerts through MetaTrader using an expert advisor, which behaves very similar to AutoView. But I'll start releasing the lessons for that series next week as I'm still getting familiar with it myself. So today's lesson is focusing on a bit of code refactoring. Now that's just coding jargon for rewriting my older code. And the reason I'm doing this is because the TradingView team have changed how a particular feature in PineScript works. Specifically, they have made the transp or transparency parameter in our plots a deprecated feature of PineScript. Now deprecated is another coding jargon word that basically just means unsupported. They don't want us to use it anymore. So if I open up the TradingView blog here, you can see, I'll leave a link to this in the video description, but you can see that they have added a new color function, a couple of new color functions to Pine. And now instead of using the transp parameter to specify transparency or opacity in our uh, visual plots, we now need to use this new color.rgb or color.new function, which I'll be explaining in today's video. So basically what I have to do is I need to go back through every public script that I've ever released uh, and change the transp parameter, the use of the transp parameter to use this new color function. I've been meaning to get around to doing this for a couple of weeks now. And given that I wanted to release a video today that doesn't require hours of editing and coding, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to show you guys how this works while I go through this process in my own scripts. So let's jump into the Pine editor and get started. So if I open up the Pine editor and I paste in one of my scripts, you can see all of these trans parameters here in these plots. When I save this script, you'll see that the compiler pops up with all of these warnings, um, this yellow writing, which says the trans argument or parameter will be deprecated soon or unsupported, uh, removed. We recommend using color.new or color.rgb functions to specify the transparency of the plots instead. So what does that mean? I will show you. First of all, what this script is doing is just plotting the zones between uh, two different moving averages. And you can see that I've set the transparency to 50% on the lines and 75% on the zones between the lines. What I need to do in order to fix this error is get rid of this transp line of code, change this line of code to say color.new, open bracket, color.lime, comma, 50. So now this is telling PineScript that I wanna plot this zone or this value in the color of lime with 50% transparency. And if I do this for all of the plots in the script, all these yellow warnings will go away. So that's the easiest way to do this if you are using uh, the inbuilt color constants. One other way to achieve this is to use the color.rgb function. So the easiest way to demonstrate this would be to change this color.red. So let me get rid of, I'll do it to the bottom one so it's easier to read. I'm gonna get rid of red and I'm going to write color.rgb. Now this stands for red, green, blue. And so each series of numbers we give this function or each parameter we pass into this function will correspond to red, green, blue, and then there's an optional transparency parameter at the end. So the RGB method of generating colors in coding is different to the hexadecimal version. So if you're not familiar with hexadecimal coloring, let me just quickly show you what that looks like. That would look like this. You'd start with a hashtag, and then there's six characters corresponding to red, green, blue. So in the hexadecimal format, FF is uh, the maximum color. So FF means full red, 0000, zero, zero, zero means no green, no blue. If I save that, you can see that this upper line is still red. So that's a hexadecimal red color. If we want to use this new RGB function to change the color of our plots, it's a little bit different. Instead of using letters and numbers, we just use a integer, a whole number between zero and 255. Zero being no red 
or no green, no blue, and 255 being maximum red, maximum green, maximum blue. So to achieve the same thing here, I would just write 255, comma, zero, comma, zero. So full red, no green, no blue. Save the script, and we should get a red line on the bottom here. There you go. But notice that it does not have any transparency applied to it. It's full uh, opacity or 0% transparent. If I wanted to add transparency using this RGB function, all I need to do is add a, another parameter here, comma 50 would set this color to 50% transparent. So now if I save the script, we will go back to how it originally looked. Now, obviously, when you're using a plain color like red, green, or blue, this is not a very efficient way to do this. We could just use the color.red uh, like I did up here, but this is more for when you want to use more complex colors. So for example, we could set these to random numbers, save that script, and this line will now be some random color. It's sort of pink or purple now. So the RGB function gives you a little bit more control over your colors and perhaps in a slightly more intuitive way than hexadecimal code or hexadecimal syntax. But anyway, let me get rid of this line of code because this plot is just a simple red color. So again, I just need to write here color.new open bracket color.red comma 50. And this will generate a new RGB color of red with 50% transparency. And so now I need to basically go through all of my scripts and do this, go through this process, get rid of the transp parameter and change everything to look like this. So I can just get rid of the transp argument and close off these parentheses. Now, if I go through my entire script and do this, we will get rid of all of those annoying um, orange warnings. So I'll do that now and I'll come back in a second. All right, that should be all of my plots uh, fixed or refactored to account for this new change in the PineScript language. If I save the script, we should get no warnings. There we go, fixed. So now I need to publish this update to the TradingView platform and then go through every single script I've ever written. And there's over 20 or 30 or so. So this will be my next hour or so, just updating my old script source code. This is the new way we need to specify transparency going forward in our scripts. So it's important to get into a habit of doing this now. And if you have any old scripts that use this trans parameter or argument in your plots or shapes, this is how you fix it. Make sure you go back and do that because I'm not sure what will happen when the TradingView team finally officially deprecate the trans argument. So that'll do it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next lesson, which will be out next week where we will learn how to automate trading scripts through MetaTrader, which unlike AutoView, unlocks the whole world of possibility insofar as the different brokers that support MetaTrader. AutoView only supports Oanda, where MetaTrader obviously is supported by most brokers. Anyway, that will do it for today's lesson. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Take care, best of luck with your trading and coding, and I'll speak to you next week.